Hey everyone, this is Will and welcome to this brand new and exciting episode of The Missing Piece. Now, if you can think about the nations in Southeast Asia, I guess besides Cambodia, the Philippines, what are the strategic partners within this region, Vietnam, has recently topped the news given this fact that Vietnam has been very quietly building this relationship not only with China, which is considered one of the largest economies in the world, but also with the countries from the European side. For so long that we know that this economic development and also this political changes are rocking this country from the left to the right. But meanwhile, we need to pay attention and begging the question is, how could Vietnam today not only is expanding its network in Asia and in the US, but also quietly with the other countries from the European side? So that's why today in this episode, we need to address this critical relationships or even the multilateral partnerships between Vietnam and any other countries from the European side. Now, join our show today is Dr. Hai Hong Wen and Dr. Ha Wen, it's an honorary research fellow at the Center for Policy Futures at the University of Queensland. Without further ado, Dr. Hai, and welcome to The Missing Piece. Thank you very much, Squill. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. Now, Dr. Hai, let's get started. Initially, when I discover you, because this, again, as I mentioned before, this unique article that you wrote and entitled, Vietnam's growing strategic partnerships with the European countries. Now, even within the article at the beginning that you mentioned, since the December of 2021, Vietnam had established diplomatic ties with 189 countries, again, which it has a special relationship with the three countries, a strategic partnership with 17 countries or comp comprehensive partnership with 13 countries. Now, again, there's a lot of numbers in this data, but also this meaningful uh, context behind this. So my question to you, Dr. Hai, is how come that we have not heard regarding all those strategic partnerships between Vietnam and also European countries. So in other words, what what are the main purposes for Vietnam to reach out to them? Well, I think uh, in terms of the histories of the relationship between Vietnam and uh, Europe, uh, European countries, um, um, Vietnam has a long histories with European countries, even uh, during the war. Um, um, uh, back in 1970. So, so as you can see that uh, next year, um, Vietnam will celebrate um, uh, the diplomatic ties with uh, many European countries, even for uh, 50 years or 60 years. So this, even including, you know, Western uh, European countries um, uh, during the war time. So, uh, so that's why Vietnam uh, has long uh, paid attention to of improving or uh, establishing relationship with European countries. Because Vietnam, um, well, if you look at the histories uh, or the connection between Vietnam and Europe, because Vietnam is also a um, colonial country of uh, Europe, I, I would say, uh, France, um, and, uh, and also it has good connection with the um, socialist bloc, communist blocs mm. during the, um, the Cold War. So, and, and also, uh, if um, many uh, developed countries um, uh, um, are, uh, you know, um, in Europe, and that's why Vietnam see Europe as one of the world um, that Vietnam would uh, want to establish relationship in order to um, benefit the development, benefit the assistance, benefit the support from European countries. Now, when Vietnam started the Doi uh, Moi policy, of course, um, European countries also um, uh, took the lead in um, um, re-established uh, or normalized diplomatic ties with Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and even it um, uh, um, uh, normalized diplomatic with Vietnam well before um, the United States. And 
And, and I would say that because of that, the United States look at what European countries are doing with Vietnam economically, uh, politically, and that's why it's, it, it's a kind of a, you know, a motivation um, for the United States to normalize relationship with Vietnam. Mm. So, well, strategically, uh, Vietnam see U European Union or European countries as uh, a very strategic partner, important partners economically, politically, and from security perspective as well. Hmm. Professor Hai, I want to continue our conversation again, going back to the article. This is something that there's, uh, I, I, again, I encourage our readers to go online to uh, look for this article because it's really uh, well written. Now, it says, but you wrote, Vietnam conceives of strategic partnerships as a framework through which cooperation is enhanced with shared interest and built strategic trust. I want to know what does that mean when you say, well, when you wrote this strategic trust, what kind of trust are you referring to between Vietnam and those, those allies? Because going back to the, uh, the beginning of this, we're looking at the countries such as Spain, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and Italy. I mean, given the yeah. fact these are just profound and economic capable countries. So going back to the question, what does that mean? There's a strategic trust between Vietnam with each of the partners. Yeah, uh, well, I think um, Vietnam, uh, in terms of the levels of diplomatic ties with countries around the world, um, it um, lay out three levels of diplomatic ties, conventional friendship, uh, comprehensive partnerships, and strategic partnership. And I also mentioned in my article, when Vietnam established a strategic partnership with the country, that means it also wants to improve and establish a strategic trust. Mm. Yes, that's the, the key word. Strategic trust here, that means um, uh, Vietnam uh, really, um, you know, look at those countries as a, you know, real partners, real friends, and uh, strategic um, uh, trust. It also means that well um we can collaborate with each other without any uh, uh, suspicion or even um uh, you know it can uh, expand collaborations to uh, you know um, own uh, areas um um including security defense more importantly strategic trust that mean Vietnam expect those countries, remember those countries are Western, right? They consider mm -hmm. as Western um, or uh, capital, cap capital, capitalist society. Mm. So Vietnam expects those countries will support Vietnam and to look in, in terms of political regimes because Vietnam is a one country, one, one parties rules society, right? It's communist countries, while the other one is a democratic society. So Vietnam really expect when they establish that kind of you know, strategic partnership, they expect that, well, the countries not only promote collaborations comprehensively, strategically in own fields, but also in terms of the support of political regime mm. in Vietnam. Mm. So strategic trust here mean, well, I trust you, and um, and I I expect that I will get the support from you not only in economic, political, uh, defense, but also um, in terms of the uh, the consideration of the powers of the ruling parties in Vietnam. Mm. You know, Doctor Hai, it's so interesting that when you mention this strategic trust, now that's bring the nation of America coming to our conversation. I'm sure you're also familiar with the news that not too long ago, I guess to be precise, uh, two to three weeks ago, the members of ASEAN were invited to uh, visit the uh, sitting U.S. President Joe Biden in the White House. Now, as yeah. I mentioned also in the intro, Vietnam play a, a strategic or uh, a significant role uh, uh, in Southeast Asia. Now, Yep. By having this visit to the U.S. and also building this economic partnership with the U.S. government, does that yep. elevate the image of Vietnam uh, for the European partners or the, for the European allies? Because we know that for the U.S., particularly from the Joe Biden side, 
has been trying to maintain this mutual trust or to to consolidate this mutual trust between U.S. and the Asian uh, uh, countries. But needless to say, has not been very successful uh, uh, for a long time. But right now, Vietnam has been very boldly stepping out the comfort zone, reaching out to the U.S., connecting with the European side. So how much does it help Vietnam in terms of this economic benefits? Given this condition, uh, Vietnam is still, as you mentioned before, it's a communist country, and also this economy is still in this unstable uh, position. Can you help us to understand that? Vietnam also considers um, the U.S. as one of its strategic partners. Uh, well, Vietnam has no um, uh, secret to hide that you know, aspiration or anticipation mm. of establishing a strategic partnership with the United States. It's just only a matter of time. Um, um, and uh, I think even, you know, even when Vietnam's people, uh, Vietnam, you know, in the um, uh, foreign policies um, uh, of the Communist Party of Vietnam adopted at uh, the Congress recently, and Vietnam uh, said that Vietnam really want to establish uh, the strategic partnership with all um, P5 in the um, UN Security Council. So, of course, P5 that include um, the US. But when even when Vietnam established that kind of strategic partnership, unfortunately, so so far it's just only comprehensive. But that that is the goal in in the future. And as I said, it's just a matter of times the two countries will you know uh, uh, formally uh, upgrade their uh, comprehensive mm. uh, partnerships to strategic partnership. So there's no conflict. Um, and it's just a complementary um, um, uh, actions. If Vietnam establishes a strategic partnership with the U.S., why it maintain or even uh, deepen the strategic partnership with European countries? Um, and, uh, and and Vietnam uh, consider uh, that well, um, um, it, 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 it 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 doesn't mean when it establishes a strategic partnership with one country. It wouldn't ignore the strategic partnership with other countries, or in other words, it, it really depends on the scope, the areas, or the um, the um, uh, the uh, really the area of collaboration that expect to um, establish with a strategic mm. partners. So it does not mean when established a strategic partnership with one country and it had the same strategic collaboration with un another countries so as you can see even with even it, it has strategic partnership with those five countries but the areas of collaboration is different and also the emphasis of collaborations with those countries is also different so say for instance some country it, it might focus more on defense and security mm. and the other ones might focus on economics or the other ones focus more on political you know um uh, uh, collaborations as a pillar. So it really depends on, but generally, generally, when established a strategic partnership, that means it consider other partners as a strategic partners and friends. So um, I think, um, and, uh, and as even even now, um, Vietnam uh, trying to, you know, reach out to all those uh, countries and to you know, uh, establish strategic partnership with uh, those countries. And it consider as one of the ways that it wouldn't expand and mobilize more support, uh, strategic support and assistance from the outside world in order to, uh, you know, um, uh, um, uh, to, um, you know, to build up, increase its abilities to defend its uh, sovereignty. Mm. No, Dr. Hai, let's go back to the names of the countries. Again, as you mentioned in the article, the nation of Spain, nation of Germany, Italy, France, and the UK. Now, if we look at this ongoing political shift or the political changes for some of the countries, cor correct me if I'm wrong, the nation of France 
uh, this year successfully elected, uh, 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 well, I guess uh, we'll say continuous uh, with his previous uh, presidency, which is Emmanuel Macron. But now, but Germany this year uh, elected another brand new chancellor, but any other countries are still going or undergoing some tremendous social and political changes. Now, coming yeah. back to the country of Vietnam, Southeast Asia, those nations, played a significant role in supporting this world economic progress. The, the next question might sound very silly, but I still want you to help us to understand. Why should those European countries to, to agree with Vietnam or willing to partner with Vietnam rather than any other countries? I mean, given the fact that the Philippines, mm. Cambodia, Laos, and you know Singapore they are also yeah. in this very competitive zones as well. But what mm. what kind of advantages actually placed on Vietnam in order to gain mm. or to deepen the trust with those allies in yeah. European side? Yeah, well, I think um, the reason why uh, the European unions and also those uh, strategic European countries um, uh, see Vietnam as a strategic partners or important partners because of Europe political positions of Vietnam. So if, if, if you perform, you know, if you, if, if any countries that, you know, Vietnam is considered like a, you know, um, the debt mm -hmm. to uh, Southeast Asia. And people now talking about the Indo-Pacific, right? Mm -hmm. European um, unions now also has adopted the, um, uh, it's the uh, uh, Indo-Pacific strategy. And the UK, Germany, uh, France, uh, has also uh, adopted um, uh, their uh, respective uh, Indo-Pacific. So Vietnam's within the Indo-Pacific, uh, it really lies at the center uh, of uh, the, uh, the 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 um, Europe uh, Indo-Pacific region, and and particularly Vietnam is one of the, uh, the 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 claimants in the South China Sea. And the South China Sea is a very important uh, marine route in the world. Mm. And the South China Sea plays a very important role for uh, economic development of European unions and also to those um, uh, European strategic uh, partners of Vietnam. And also Vietnam is now is a, you know, uh, one of the far fastest uh, developing um, economies in the world and um, because Vietnam uh, has a very political, uh, very political stability, and even though you know Vietnam uh, has a different um, uh, political systems with those countries, but Vietnam's, um, I think, um, um, in terms of the um, uh, politics, in terms of political stability, and in terms of political cultures, I think um, they have more, um, you know. Uh, stable uh, politics than uh, other countries. Look at the Philippines, look at Laos, and look at Cambodia. Um, I think uh, Vietnam has much more um, uh, stable um, mm. uh, politics than mm. those countries. And, and as I said, uh, also because Vietnam has a long history of diplomatic ties with those countries. And I think because of those long histories of relationship, they really understand um, uh, each other. They really understand uh, the, um, you know, the, the, um, the uh, how can I say, you know, it, 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 even though if we're talking about diplomatic rights, but very much is about the people to people relationship, right? Mm. So, so European countries look at Vietnam as a very, you know, or Vietnamese people um, has a, um, you know, good um, and very friendly um, uh, characteristic, very open cultures. So, and that's why, you know, more or less, um, they see Vietnam as a important partner, a reliable partners, and that also because of Vietnam's foreign policy as well. Mm. Now, Dr. Hai, I'm very glad that you mentioned regarding South China Sea, and that really bring us to the next portion of the conversation. Let's bring China into our dialogue. Again, going back to the article, and there's something that you wrote, and I quote, Vietnam and these strategic partners, which assume that the countries we mentioned above, have agreed that all disputes in the South China Sea, where China's perceived aggressive and bullying actions have been criticized and must be solved 
through peaceful means according to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Now, let's stop there for a second. We know, again, put in a separate conversation, the relationship between Vienna and China has been hot and cold, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I remember back in the days when I was traveling to Vietnam, especially uh, if I'm not mistaken, that would be 2017 and during the APAC and also the ASEAN Summit. Mm. Leaders from around the world have been criticizing China for dominating this South China Sea uh, conversation. So in other words, China was not playing by the rules. But fast forward today, how would you describe this relationship between China and Vietnam today in terms of this political or economic relationship? That's the first question. And the second thing is, if we look at South China Sea, does that mean that Vietnam is actually caught in the middle between China and also those European allies? Believe me, no one would like to be in this position, but do you think that Vietnam has that way out out of this jeopardy? So let's go to those two questions. Yeah, all right. So I think now in terms of the relationship which, between Vietnam and um, uh, China, it's on a way a very complicated uh, relationship. Uh, even though uh, the, the two countries um, uh, now under the rules of the Communist Party, mm. um, so and 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 particularly um, the relationship between the two communist countries since nineteen uh, forties, uh, when of course Vietnam um, became independent nineteen forty five, and of course China became independent in nineteen forty nine. And, and then, since then, the two countries under the rules of the Communist Party. And, of course, they, they were, and, of course, now, uh, still, um, there was in the same bloc, communist bloc, and now uh, the uh, one of uh, two of the five communist countries in the world. And that's why people look at those, um, you know, connections. They very often say, well, they are very closely linked, mm. or they have very close relationship. Well, technically, yes. But um, underneath, um, I think there's only way a you know suspicion, and so only way a division in terms of uh, uh, the um, uh, the the um, you know the trust. I would say because if you look at the histories of the of, of, you know of relationship between Vietnam and China, Vietnam in the in, in the history was occupied you know for thousand years by mm. the Chinese. And, and now, even now, the two countries still have the disputes in the South China Sea. And, um, and um, uh, the Paracels uh, Islands are now under occupied by China after its use of force in the 1974. And of course, some of the islands in the uh, uh, Spratly Islands uh, also are uh, under occupied by the Chinese after the incidents in 1988. So if people say, well, there's no problem at all between Vietnam and China, they are wrong. And of course, and everyone knows that. Uh, but of course, Vietnam um, uh, understands that they are living next to a very, you know, uh, giant neighbors. Mm. And in Vietnam, we often say, uh, they, they often say that, well, you can choose friends, but you can't choose the neighbor. And that's why uh, Vietnam knows what they have to, you know, uh, behave uh, um, um, to uh, um, and with you know, China's and 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 of course Vietnam uh, doesn't want to have a conflict with China, of course, uh, because at the end of the day, it will affect the development of uh, both uh, countries, particularly more, uh, of course, on Vietnam. So, um, um, so politically, yes. Because of the the two countries are still under the rules of the two communist party, and uh, and I think uh, some people are, are very um, um, you know uh, under my the the party to, to, to party relationship, but for, but as a uh, um, you know um, foreign po Vietnam foreign policy researchers and also Vietnam and China relations researchers, I can see that. The party-to-party -party relationship between Vietnam and uh, China is a very important mm. uh, channel. Uh, Sometimes it used in order to 
uh, addressed very sensitive and very you know um, um, uh, problematic um, mm. uh, incidents. Say, for instance, in 1914. I'm uh, sorry, in 2014, when the the uh, Hainan's um, uh, um, oil rock. Mm. Um, so uh, incidents uh, happened in the Vietnam's as uh, um, um, economic um, uh, uh, exclusive uh, e- exclusive economic zones. So it, it was the party to party relationship uh, helped uh, to uh, address the problems. So so yeah, um, and the and the two countries of course see that um, they need to maintain very close uh, political relationship. Now, economically, of course, um, uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, China is the the, uh, the largest economic partners of Vietnam's, and um, um, the the trade volumes between the two countries is uh, uh, um, you know, yeah is higher than any other uh, uh, trade volume between Vietnam and mm. other countries. But of course, in that uh, uh, economic relationship, Vietnam has to suffer the big. Um, uh, deficit, of mm. course, of uh, I think one uh, one hundred and fifty million dollars per year, while Vietnam, um, um, you know, um, uh, only um, uh, exported uh, uh, fifty million dollars, why it has to import more than one billion dollars. So it's really a big challenge for Vietnam, and of course, it's a uh, a symmetry um, in the economics. Um, relationship between uh, uh, China and Vietnam. Uh, but of course, uh, one of the issues is that most of the raw materials for production and manufacturing in Vietnam are uh, imported from China. So I think um, uh, Vietnam's economy is still now uh, very much or heavily relies on uh, China. That is one of the 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 the, the, uh, the issue. Uh, and of course, Vietnam is trying to diversify its market in order to reduce the uh, trade um, uh, deficits with China. Mm. Now, in terms of the South China Sea, uh, well, um, I think um, Vietnam is um, uh, very careful um, in this um, um, uh, case uh, because uh, Vietnam knows that, um, um, uh, well, um, uh, uh, is you know Vietnam's alone or uh, only. Um, of other um, uh, claimants um, um, uh, cannot, um, of course, um, win in uh, this um, uh, dispute, or in other words, has a stronger, um, you know, um, um, uh, defense mm. against um, uh, China, and that's why it 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 it, it expand or it internationalized the issue. And that's the only way that it can, uh, you know, uh, bring in uh, external forces in order to um, uh, to help uh, um, uh, Vietnam's and also other uh, uh, claimants uh, to build up its strength in order to self protect at least uh, itself from uh, further China's uh, encroachments into the territories of um, uh, their uh, countries. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 also from the other side, from the external um, uh, 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 side, they also see, as I mentioned before, South China Sea is a very important marine route mm-hmm. for economic development uh, in the world. Um, and that's why uh, there's also uh, a stack of the benefits of um, the European countries as well. And uh, and um, of course, I think uh, Vietnam do not expect that there will be a you know um, uh, a conflict between um, China's uh, with European countries. Well, the the conflict between China's um, or um, the stalemates in the relationship between China's and European Union uh, or European countries um, um, uh, is uh, their own problem because mm. European countries, the European Union. Uh, they uh, very much emphasize on human rights. They emphasize on um, uh, the uh, the rule of laws and also the you know the um, international laws. But China is doing uh, in a way that it want to reestablish international orders or it won't want to establish its own rules. And of course, there's a you know um, um, allegations of very serious violations of human rights in. Uh, China, and that's why you know um, it, it 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 has a conflicts with European Union. It's not a it's not a matters of European unions, um, you know, support Vietnam's uh, approaches in the South China.